I try to adjust this uh, camera. Let me say good afternoon to everyone who's logged in. It's uh, 2.32 on uh, Friday afternoon. And with apologies for the kind of late start, if you logged in last week, you know that I was there earlier on. But for those people who are logging in right now, I want to say good afternoon. Normally I would be saying good morning, but I'm so glad to be here with you another week. Uh, my name is Sharon Pearson, and of course, I'm the host of The Conduit Show, which can be heard on a Friday at Turn It Up Radio, also on a Saturday morning from 11 a.m. to midday at the English Connection Media, and again on a Sunday between the hours of 6 and 9 p.m. at e2onair.com. So I'm here with the Jamaicans.com family, and let me say hi, good afternoon, and welcome. Thank you for taking your time out to uh, log in to me, Sharon P. As I come with the updates, uh, COVID and other news, updates from New York City. All right, I'm trying to... Um, find my page so I can actually log on and see what's going on. Because uh, today I'm actually using my, my laptop with a jerry-rigged camera instead of my cell phone. So uh, if I um, am seeming to not be paying too much attention, I am paying attention, but I'm multitasking. How is everybody doing out there in the land of Corona? The world has become Corona land, and that seems to be the only word on everybody's lips. And it's it's sad, but it's our reality, and we have to deal with it. We can't just throw our hands up in the air and uh, stick our heads in the sand. No, we have to deal with it. So I'm coming to you, wherever you may be listening from, wherever you may be logged on, uh, do let me know in the comments section where you're listening from, where are you logged on from, because, of course, we want to... I want to interact with each and every one of you who has decided to take your time out of your busy day or whatever it is you're doing to look at me, Sharon P, as I am going to give you updates from New York City. So um, where to begin? Where to begin? Um, first of all, I think I need to go to my email because I sent myself a message um, and I don't see it. Oh my goodness, that's not good. Okay, here we go. I sent myself a, a couple of notes um, and I'm not sure where this video is showing. Um, I know it's showing somewhere. Let me see if I can go to jamaicans.com and see myself. Um, I'm actually on the uh, manager page and I'm not really seeing anything. So let me just go to the regular page that everybody else would log into and see if I can... Uh, interact and see who's there and if my camera's working i think it is um let me see why are we not seeing what i want to see anyway i'm sure i will get it sorted out this is new to me um in terms of going live on a facebook page for jamaicans.com uh last week was my initiation so to speak and uh i'm still trying to get the hang of things so bear with me people and um not sure what's going on here. Maybe I'll just go back over to uh, the live page here and see what's going on. Um, good afternoon to you, Winston Bailey. Thank you so much for logging in. Great. So I can actually see and comment on uh, people who are logging in. Uh, so the news from New York City. And I think um, anyone in the Caribbean would understand that we got some devastating news on Easter Monday, April the 13th, uh, not news that we were expecting at all. And that was the death of beloved broadcaster, Gil Gilbert Bailey, who died actually Easter Monday morning, April the 13th uh, of COVID-19. And Mr. Bailey, yes, Faye Anderson, thank you so much for logging in from Philadelphia. Uh, and Winston in from LA, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Um, well, we're talking about Mr. Gil Bailey because I think of all the news that we in New York have had to experience this past week, and I will touch on some other news, the, the, the news of the death of Gil Bailey, I think we're still reeling from that news. Mr. Bailey passed away Easter Monday at the age of 84, and yes, the family have confirmed that he was another victim of the dreaded COVID-19 coronavirus. So let me tell you a little bit about Gil Bailey. Um, yes, hi Ferguson Ephib. 
Uh, thank you for welcoming me to the platform. If you'd like to let us know where you're logging in from, that would be great. Thank you so much. So we're talking about the death of, of Gil Bailey. Gil Bailey was born in Airy Castle in St. Thomas. And uh, I have relatives who live in St. Thomas and I know Airy Castle well. It's um, on the way from Morant Bay to Bath and it's up in the mountains. It's beautifully cool. And of course, as you can imagine, it's very lush and green. So that's where Gil Bailey was born. He actually moved to England when he was 21 in 1957. And from there, he actually, uh, this is this is just amazing to me because I didn't know these facts about Mr. Bailey. I want to say hi to Desmond Brown, who's, log, who's logged in from the UK. What's up, Desmond? Yes, you can see my British flag in the background. My name's Sharon P. and I am from England, but living in New York. We're talking about Gil Bailey. So Mr. Bailey moved to London when he was, I think, uh, 21 years old. And he was actually employed and the folks in England will get a kick out of this. He was employed as an MC at Count Suckle's club and people of a certain age will know who Count Suckle was. He was an empresario, nightclub owner and man about town. And that club was called the Q Club. And I used to hear my mom talking about Q Club. I never got a chance to go because I was, I kind of led a fairly sheltered life not giving away too much but Gil Bailey was an MC at the Q Club so he left England and moved to New York City in 1967 he relocated to New York uh, where he met and married his wife who predeceased him I think three years ago but they were a power couple in the New York reggae radio reggae industry so much so that Mr Bailey earned the nickname the godfather of reggae uh, radio, reggae radio, the godfather of reggae music. He was the first person on terrestrial radio, which radio means that you can get on the, the dial and turn the dial and listen to radio. He was one of the pioneers. He was the pioneer, the first one to be on radio playing reggae music. And he started out uh, at a radio station uh, called uh, WHBI in Newark, New Jersey. He then moved to um, a station in New York. I think they were at New Rochelle at the time, WNWK, and they are still there, still playing, or they have, they would call it brokered radio. So you have different um, broadcasters who lease time at WNWK. I think that's uh, is it WNWK? I may be getting confused. The radio station in New Rochelle. Actually, it, it it's not WNWK. I'm just having a brain freeze, but it will come back to me. So Gil Bailey has been on radio for more than 50 years doing the thing that he obviously loved to do, which was to um, make people aware of reggae music. Because back in the day when he was a pioneer, no one was uh, wanting, and I'm not sure who is calling me now, but I'm going to have to call her back later on. So he was playing reggae music on air before anybody else was doing it. So much so, listen, you'll get a kick out of this. Jamaican people were like, why is this man on radio? And why is he playing that boogie music? So uh, to start his radio career, Mr. Bailey was playing primarily to white people who were appreciating the music that he was playing that was coming out of the little island of Jamaica. Can you imagine how many people can credit their start or their inspiration for being on radio to Mr. Gil Bailey? That's why we call him a pioneer of reggae radio music in New York City. And that's why New York is reeling. You don't have to be in the entertainment world to know the contribution that Gil Bailey made to the genre of reggae music and radio. He will be remembered for years to come. And it was poignant, I think, that last year, Conroy Allison, who's also on radio, the radio station in, in, in New Rochelle, for the life of me, the name escapes me. I'm not sure if it's WN, no, it's not WNWK, but WVIP. Sorry, all these W's are confusing me. So uh, the radio station in, in New Rochelle now is WVIP. Uh, so uh, Mr. Conroy Allison, who also has a program on WVIP, last year 
uh, as part of his Maritime tribute, he honored a, a few of the radio presenters, broadcasters, and Gil Bailey was one of those who was honored um, by being presented with a golden mic. And I think it's just beautiful, as Patti yeah. LaBelle says, and others say, they want to get their roses while they're alive to appreciate it. So I want to say kudos to Conroy Allison and Janice Julian and all of the people who were behind that effort to honor broadcasters. Uh, I know Francine Chin was also uh, one of the honorees along with uh, Dubmaster Chris and, and also um, Clinton, Clinton Lindsay, who is broadcasting in Florida and other names, which I can't remember. So apologies for that. But that's, that's the, the major use, news from my New York perspective in terms of what's happening in New York uh, in terms of COVID. So that was a huge loss. Not taking, of course, anything away from all of the other families in New York City and surrounding areas who've also lost loved ones. It's interesting to note that um, I was reading a, a, an article just in preparation for this live chat with you. So if you have also experienced a death, if you're logging in and you've experienced a death in your family because of COVID, then, and if you feel like sharing with the listeners, please make your comment in the post and we can acknowledge you as well because there are so many deaths and, and of course it would be impossible for me to recognize all of them. But Gil Bailey was one that his passing impacted many in New York, because if you talk to anybody who's lived in New York uh, from a certain period, and even up to this day, Mr. Bailey, up until maybe a week before his passing, he was still broadcasting. He was still coming with his irrepressible personality, uh, so much so that he was on social media platforms. He had a live Facebook page, and he also was broadcasting on YouTube. So he was certainly keeping himself topical up to the time, as they say, uh, and, and creating an, a new generation of fans and followers. So that's someone that you call a pioneer who's really got it together and not a has-been. He was definitely relevant. And his passing, I mean, we will definitely feel his passing. And Gil Bailey was a one of a kind, along with his beloved wife, Pat Bailey, who, as I said, predeceased him. So that's just one of the items of, of note that I wanted to talk about in terms of this New York update about COVID. And, and the show today may be a bit somber because the things that are affecting me, my perspective, is the number of deaths of people that we know, the deaths the death dragnet is expanding. So each of us is being touched. Each of us now knows whether it's third or fourth or first hand, someone who is becoming a victim to this pandemic. Hi, good afternoon to Angela Lewis Brown, who's logged in from Texas. Yes, I'm talking about the wonderful, the irrepressible Mr. Gil Bailey, who passed away on Easter Monday at the age of 84, but he was still on radio. So still doing it, still keeping his finger on the pulse of reggae music. Uh, and it's funny that, you know, Gil Bailey was responsible for previewing and, as we say in the business, bussing certain tunes, mean, meaning he was the first one to play the joyride rhythm on radio. So this man had fingerprints all over reggae progress, reggae radio, and, and what we have today. And, and it behooves all of us who are a part of the music industry, whether it's an online internet radio program like The Conduit Show, or, you know, we have to uphold certain standards because uh, Mr. Bailey had certain standards and he knew what was right and he knew what was wrong. And he certainly ushered in Wow, such a golden age of reggae, which then gave way to the golden age of reggae when you couldn't turn on a TV without seeing one reggae artist or another, uh, the Grammy the Grammy kid, Shabba Ranks, to Shaggy, um, Morgan Heritage, all of these people who would perhaps not have had their work out there had it not been for one person, a pioneer, to set the ball rolling, to start the thing off. 
So Gil Bailey, um, maximum respect and rest in eternal peace. All right, the other news I wanted to give you in terms of New York City, um, in the past 24 hours, there have been 606 coronavirus deaths in New York City alone. For the whole of the US, the total is 12,000, I'm sorry, yes, for the whole of the US, it's 12,100. Um, there are 20, 222,000 people who've come down with the virus, not deaths, just people who are in, infected. I think if for the total, uh, let me see, the, the highest daily figure, and I'm reading and my glasses are a bit yucky, uh, for the highest daily figure was 2,524 uh, for the whole of the US, and that's in a 24-hour period. So over a period of 24 hours, 2,524 people have died in the US, and that's the highest figure. Now, I'm giving you these figures. Uh, in terms of total deaths in the, in the US, the figure is now well, it's probably changed since I got this information, but it was um, 33,500 for the whole of the US. And I give you those figures because we've been hearing that, you know, there is a clamoring. Oh, the economy, the economy, the economy. We, we've got to boost the economy. We've got to get back, uh, get the economy back on its feet. And, you know, there are various camps. Of course, we have uh, the federal government saying we've got to restart the economy. We've got to get people back to work. And then there are what I would call cooler heads who say, well, hold on a second. Before we open up the economy, so to speak, before we get rid of social distancing and say uh, we can go back to work, we need to understand how many people may have the virus but are not showing any symptoms, uh, who have not yet been tested, because we see what's happening. I had a quick look at some a little headline that caught my eye regarding Italy. Now, we know that Italy went through a horrific time in terms of the, the overwhelming flood of victims and also people who were coming down with the virus. And they, God bless them, they worked through it. They were on a total shutdown, but I see that they started to reopen and I'm not sure whether it's total, I don't think it's total reopening, but they've kind of relaxed their quarantine um, restrictions and there's been an uptick. Now, this is the same uptick in people who are coming down, presenting with virus sy symptoms and also those who are subsequently dying. So this is one of the key things that people in New York are talking about. Can we reopen the economy? Can we restart the economy? Can we get back into the flow of things without putting in certain precautions? As our governor, Andrew Cuomo said, uh, if you turn the valve, and you see a spike in the number of cases and consequently the number of deaths, then that means that you have relaxed things maybe too quickly, too soon. So you have to really consider carefully. It cannot be that restarting the economy is the paramount key to when we, some of us, uh, because I hear the talk is that we should have a, um, a staggered, reopening. So, um, you know, maybe people in the Bronx who live in the South Bronx, maybe those people whose name, surname is, begins with a P, maybe they can start working or, or whatever. However, they're going to kind of do this staged um, reinsertion to work. Uh, I'm not sure how that really is going to work because if I've been out of work for a month, uh, there's nothing in my cupboard because I didn't get the stimulus check. By the way, uh, if you are in, in America, did you get your stimulus check? And I'm, I'm not sure if I'm uh, following what's going on here. I see what's happening. Uh, greetings, Angel Angie Lewis Bowen Brown from um, Texas. Thank you so much. Zizi Palmer Lewis, logging in from Maryland via Kingston, straight from Yard. Good afternoon to you. Um, you don't know about Gil Bailey, but uh, he was someone that was uh, very impactful uh, in the lives of Jamaicans who were in New York, who were able to hear the music that they were familiar with from their homeland. And, and not just not just reggae music. Uh, Mr. Bailey played 
all types of music on his radio programs. But it was having that connection to hear somebody on radio who sounded just like you. And, and that was one of the things that made Mr. Bailey so unique. He did not come on with a hoity-toity accent. He was himself. And that, I think, is what endeared him to so many New Yorkers and so many people in, in America who could hear his program. So, um, Angie Lewis Brown um, is asking the question, do you know how many Jamaicans we've lost? Um, I think the last count, I heard it was 15 Jamaicans and passed, it's either 12 or 15. Uh, and I'm trying not to concentrate on COVID news out of Jamaica, though of course there will at times be overlap because a colleague of mine is on jamaicans.com with her update. So what I would suggest you do is you should go to the jamaicans.com page and look, um, her name escapes me at the moment, but I was actually watching her video last night and she talks about how COVID is affecting Jamaica. Uh, so I don't want to step on her toes, so to speak, and repeat news that, you know, she knows about. I'm in New York, so I, I'm trying to focus and concentrate on COVID news from my perspective. Of course, I'm Sharon Pearson, and I want to say it's great to partner with Jamaicans.com to bring this perspective, which some people may not know about, but we're glad that I'm, I'm here able to do this. And, and, and good evening, good afternoon to Jared Johnston Reynolds, who's logged in from East Texas, who is telling me that he should be in Jamaica now. And, you know, again, that's one uh, another issue that I can talk about because I want to say um, very quickly, because I see my time is almost up, very, very quickly, the ambassador to um, Washington, D.C., Jamaican Audrey Marks has done a wonderful thing. If you are a Jamaican and you're stuck in America, so to speak, and your visa, you're on, you're on a temporary, temporary status in America, and you're wondering how you're going to get back home, there is a helpline that's been set up by Audrey Marks. Um, what you could do, I don't have the call-in number because there was a, a question and answer session yesterday uh, where the number was given out for people who had concerns to call in. But what I suggest you could do is go on the Facebook page of Audrey Marks and see what the information is and how, if you did not uh, if you were not able to get on that call, how you can get the information, because I'm sure there's some great information that's coming from the Jamaican ambassador in Washington, Audrey Marks. If you are one of those people who is stuck in America and, and wondering how you're going to get back home, okay? So I, I would direct you to go to the Facebook page for Audrey Marks where I'm sure that she has willing hands, able to, to, to listen to your concerns and point you in the right direction and put you on the right path to for you to get back home. So I'm, I'm like, it's 2.55. I can't believe the time has gone so quickly. Uh, a lot of the other things I wanted to speak about, um, I'm going to maybe leave to another time. But I think I spent most of the time today talking about Mr. Bailey because I think he warranted it really um we give condolences to his family his friends to his fans to his acquaintances and we salute him for his bravery in being a pioneer in terms of reggae music in terms of diaspora in terms of just being the first and i think it's warranted i'm sharon pearson and this is my time on jamaicans.com. Sharon Pearson is about to log off. And I'm wondering if I can do this. No, I'm not going to do that because I don't want jamaicans.com to get into any trouble with copyright issues. If you want to hear some music from me, then you should log on to The Conduit Show. I'm here on a Saturday morning from 11 a.m. to midday at the EnglishConnectionMedia.com. And also on Sundays, between the hours of 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at e2onair.com with The Conduit Show. And that's my time. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you so much for your time logging in. And when I'm here next week, I want to be able to interact with you more. So if there's a question that you'd like to ask about how the folks in New York are doing, how, how the folks in New York are doing, or if, if there's something, a burning question that you have for yourself, 
I will answer to the best of my ability. Because at the end of the day, we're all in this thing together, whether we're, we are in the UK, in Texas, in Philadelphia, in Jamaica, this is worldwide. And next week, I think I wanna ask the question, yes, he was, Judith Oliver Wolf is logged in and she's saying, uh, she, Gilbert Bailey was the number one DJ in New York. And yes, Judith, I have to agree with you because he had thousands of fans over a 50, more than 50 years. And that is no mean feat. The fact that he, the longevity, because I'll tell you, I wish I had his determination, you know, because when you've been doing something for so long, and I think I saw a quote where he said, if you're doing something that you don't love, don't do it. Yes, Ferguson, Ephip, you stay safe too. All of you stay safe and protect yourselves as best you can. The news out of New York is now that when you're on the street, you must wear a mask and gloves. When you enter any establishment, you must wear a mask and gloves. I have to tell you, this past week, I went into an establishment in the Bronx and a man came in with no mask even though there was a sign on the store window saying all customers please wear a mask well you know i'm the troublemaker he came in and i was looking around and the the, the, the chinese people in the store because it was you know a korean store were saying mask 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 and he was ignoring them he got his basket it was shopping like nobody's business and i just blurted out if he refuses to wear a mask you should refuse to serve him because of course they're saying this is airborne. So please don't be the person that goes out there. And if I see you, I'm gonna have to shout at you. Just wear your mask, stay safe wherever you are. And God willing, I'll see you all next week. Take care, bye.